Okay, so we're back for part two of our simple silicone brush on mold. This of course is kind of a unique approach to this kind of mold because normally I would do this all in just one homogenous uh, brush on mold of 5130F all through all the different coats. But if you remember from part one, we actually used a soft silicone. I did a soft silicone on just the ears and then built up everywhere else with the 5130. So what that means is on our ears, we have 5110F, which is a fast setting, very soft around a Shore A5 silicone. And that's just on the ears. And then everything else is the 5130F, which is around a 25 Shore A. And the reason for that is that really soft silicone around ears, since around ears you have really complicated undercuts, that you don't want too much drag or too much resistance on those ears or they'll snap and break when you go to demold it. Especially if you're dealing with something like a hydrocal positive or a wax positive, or if you're gonna be casting any of those kind of materials into that finished mold. So that just gives us the ability to both demold our original positive without the risk of breaking it. And also when we're casting material into this mold, we could cast more fragile materials into this with a much lower risk of breaking those parts coming out. So in keeping with the fast and low cost approach for this, we're going to be making a very simple plaster banded shell over the top of this silicone mold. Now the plaster bandages that I'm going to be using in this, I've used in previous tutorials, and these are actually uh, bandages left over from my store, which is no longer an option, unfortunately, for you. But when you're picking out bandages, uh, I'll, I'll see if I can find a, a good link for bandages to put in the video description. But real important, don't just grab any kind of bandage material online. The slower setting hobby bandages that are typically intended for model railroads and scenic work and things like that are very slow and very weak and take a long time to hit full strength. So they're not suitable for this kind of application. So make sure you use bandages, ideally medical grade bandages, fast setting bandages, uh, to do this so that you get a good, strong mother mold. If you use the wrong bandages, you will not get the results you see in this video. If you use good, high quality bandage material, you will have a good, strong mold that again, uh, could last you 20, 30 years. I have molds made using this technique going all the way back to uh, 20 years ago. So if done properly, a mold like this, even though it is quick and cheap, it still holds up over time. So let's get started. Now I'm gonna pick up right where I left off in the part one video. So the first thing I wanna do is check my work, my mixing of all my different batches of silicone. This is one good reason to keep those batches around and not clean out your mixing cups until everything sets up. And just make sure everything peels out without leaving any residue. And that's a good indicator that you've mixed everything properly and that all of your silicone has cured correctly. And that way, if you do have any cure inhibition, you can check for exactly where it is, if it's on the pattern or something in the batch of silicone, but always a good way to check your work. Now this silicone mold, I just needed the head and the base of the neck. So I'm going to cut off that excess silicone. I'm just using a razor knife here to trim off that excess silicone. And once I get that trimmed up, I'm ready to prepare for my mother mold. And this will be a mother mold using plaster bandages. This is the cheapest, most efficient way to do this on a low budget. And one of the things we want to do is plan out the way our shell is going to part. We could do it in two halves on the left and right or the front and the back. And in this case, I'm going to go front to back because I'm going to put the seam right down the back of the head. So I'm using a Sharpie marker or you could use any kind of permanent marker here to draw that seam line. It won't really be permanent on your silicone, but it'll stay put long enough for you to establish that parting line. Now, just to recap about what we did in part one, this is a little different because I did the silicone mold with two different silicones. I did the red part you'll see on the ears. I did that with the softer 5110F, and the rest of the mold was done with 5130F. Now for our mother mold, we're going to be doing that with plaster bandages. We're gonna do the front half of the head first, following that line that we've established, that horizon line dividing up the front and the back. And then I'm gonna release that area really well with paste wax. Now I use typically 
part all number two paste wax to release that edge. And then I'm going to make the back half so it slightly overlaps the front half of the mold. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, real important to use good quality plaster bandages for this technique to work right. I'm going to be using about two rolls of 8 inch and one roll of 6 inch bandages for this mold. Doesn't take a lot of bandage material, but real important to use good high quality bandages. Now I'm going to layer these about three layers thick and that way that makes the, the process a lot faster and makes for a much stronger mold and reduces the amount of water that keeps being applied to the bandages. So that way I just have to dip that one time and I don't oversaturate those bandages. I'm going to cut those up and set those aside and I'm making several sections here that are big enough to cover the face. So enough that I can kind of wrap those around the front area of the face to cover that. The most crucial part of this is that horizon line, that parting seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm, again, three layers thick. I'm going to make a long bandage that goes over the top of the head and follows that parting line or what we call the horizon line of a piece like this. Now the way you get high strength with a shell like this is for each layer of bandages to overlap the previous layer by about half. That way your total coverage is about six layers of plaster bandage material. Now this is a bucket of clean water and that is really important. Make sure you have plenty of clean water to activate your bandages. If you start getting your water turning milky white, as you'll see at the very end of this, by that point you need to change out your water and get some fresh water because if you keep using that water when it turns opaque white, it's not going to have enough clean water to activate your bandages. Now what I'm doing here is I'm going to fold this bandage twice. This is one of the 8 inch bandages and I'm folding it over twice and that gives me a nice tough defined edge. And You'll see here in a minute what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow that marker line and push that edge. That's the folded edge that I'm pushing up towards the back of the head. And that folded edge I want to push right up to that line where I've decided my parting line is going to be. So push that right up and then make sure that, that uh, the rest of that bandage, the kind of rougher side, we're going to feather that out into what will become the first half of the mold. So remember these are fast setting bandages so you want to move quick. You don't want to take too much time doing this. And since I'm not doing this over a living person like we would on a life cast, I'm not using warm water. This is just room temperature water. Now an important detail, what I like to do is take my index finger and kind of pinch that edge and make a nice straight blocked edge. And what that does is that gives it a much more defined seam later on. So I'm just kind of pinching that between my thumb and my forefinger to define that edge along the leading edge of the mold. Now the easy part, we're just playing fill in the blanks with our bandage material and those shorter bandages that I cut up earlier. I'm putting those on and remember those are all three layers thick. So each time I put that down about halfway over the previous bandage, I'm creating six layers of reinforcement. And you don't have to do this, but I typically like to work from the top down. You might have seen me do this in previous tutorials where I'm making a bandage shell like this. I like to work from the top down so I get a minimal amount of runoff of water on my bandages. Because you'll find if you work all over the place and oversaturate your bandages, it takes a lot longer for them to cure completely and cure to full strength, most importantly. Now for this lowest part of the bandage shell, that edge, what's going to be the edge of the final mold. I'm going to fold that bandage again to establish that nice crisp edge. And that will be kind of the collar of the mold. And I'm not going to go all the way to the edge of the, of the silicone just because I don't need it to there. We don't need reinforcement that close to the edge. And that will prevent any plastic or foam or anything else we're casting into this mold later on from getting stuck to that uh, plaster bandage edge. So I want to stay back from that just a little bit. Now I'm going to add one more reinforcement bandage to the face and call it done. So again, by doing it three layers thick with each bandage and then overlapping each one by about halfway, that gets us a, a nice strong mother mold of about six layers thick of plaster bandages. Now, this is the million dollar tip right here. Clean your hands in that bucket of plaster water and don't go rinse them off in the sink and that way that plaster goes into the bottom of that bucket and you preserve your plumbing. 
And you could wear gloves for this, but I found I can handle those bandages a lot better with uh, no gloves on. And again, the cleanup is really easy here. So now we're all set for the second half. I went ahead and let this sit for about 10 or 15 minutes. And by then, if you're using good quality bandages, it will be cured to the point you can easily start applying your paste wax. If your bandages are really slow, when you go to apply paste wax, it's going to make a big mess as it's picking up plaster there. So now it's nice and dry. And we're going to apply that uh, paste wax in about a two to three inch strip all across that horizon line to make sure that we have plenty of coverage to make sure the next application of plaster bandages doesn't stick to the first half. And a real important step here, that edge that I pinched off earlier where I made that nice, thick, defined edge, I want to make sure I apply plenty of paste wax to that edge because that's one of those areas, if you neglect that, that's where you can get it sticking between those two layers of plaster banded shell. So we want to make sure we apply that really well and then let that dry for a little bit. A little different than when you're doing this on a head cast. Since we're not doing this on a living person, we can use paste wax, which is a much better way to release plaster bandages. Now the second half is just like the first, except we're going to make that slightly overlap over the front half. And that's going to give us a key system that goes around the perimeter of the mold. And this time, instead of just one seam bandage, we're actually going to do two of these. So, and you'll see why in just a minute. I'm going to put one down to establish that uh, the second half of the mold. And then we'll put one more that has kind of a stair step effect over the previous part of the mold, the front half of the mold. So we're going to prepare two of those long seam bandages in addition to those usual little pieces to cover the face or the back of the head. And again, we're going to dip those in the water. And you'll see that water is starting to get a little bit uh, of plaster in it, but it's still, you can see into it enough. It doesn't have that kind of milky look to it. And that is really important. One of the mistakes I see a lot when people are using this method is they keep using that plaster water when it turns bright white. And at that point, it's so saturated with plaster, there's not enough clean water to activate those bandages. Now I'm doing that same fold again here. I folded that twice to create that nice thick leading edge and I'm pushing that fold right up against the uh, first half of the mold. You don't want to leave any gaps there, just push it right up against it. If you've uh, released the front half in accordance with the prophecy, you won't have any issue with that coming apart. Now another important detail as you're applying your plaster bandage shells, make sure you really massage those bandages into the surface of the silicone, really push those in, and make sure you don't have any little voids or air pockets. Because if you do, those could cause misalignment of the mold later on when you get everything reassembled for casting. Okay, now I'm ready to establish that seam and that kind of interlocking seam that we're going to have. We're taking that second seam bandage, and again, I'm folding it twice to create that nice thick leading edge. And now, this time, I'm going to make that overlap. We only need it to go about a quarter of an inch, maybe three-eighths of an inch over that seam, just a little bit, sometimes as much as half an inch, but it doesn't need to go over far to get that seam or interlocking effect that we need for that shell to key together later on. You'll find if you do this right, you'll actually wind up with two halves of the mold that will literally snap together. There's enough give in a plaster banded shell that you actually have this kind of a snap effect when those two halves go back together. So now we're playing fill in the blanks again, just working from the top down. And again, remember each one of those bandages is three layers thick. So as we build this up, if we go halfway over the previous bandage, we have now have about six layers of coverage everywhere on our mold. Now ready for the final bandage of our mold just to define that last little edge on the back of the head. And I'm going to fold it over again to get that nice established thick edge. And I like to do that any place the plaster bandage mold terminates because you don't want that frayed bandage material just hanging out there waiting to get caught on something else or pulling apart later on. So by folding everything over, you get a nice clean mold that uh, has nice defined edges. And now I'm just going to go back in with my fingertips and clean up that edge where that seam meets the first half of the mold. Make sure that's nice and well defined. 
And now we're ready to let that sit and cure completely. Now, this is the same technique we use for head cast, but in this instance, we can let it sit a little bit longer and get to higher strength because obviously we don't have a living subject underneath. So I let this sit for about 20, 30 minutes or so, and now I'm ready to pop off the back half of the shell. You see that came out nice and clean. You see that little stair step effect on the inside of that mold. And now we pull off the front half of our mold. And even though this doesn't have keys, you'll find that this seats very well back into the mold. The silicone portion fits right back in where it should go. You can just put your hand inside the face and feel it go right back where it's supposed to go, provided you got that silicone nice and smooth when you're making that outer uh, final coat of that silicone mold. Now I'm gonna go in and do my little S cut down the back of the head. And much like you've seen in previous tutorials where I've done this technique, when I make that little S cut down the back of the mold for this, I wanna keep that fairly tight. You don't wanna make this too big so it's difficult to clean up. But I'm not going all the way down to the plaster life cast. I'm just doing this about maybe a half inch or so into the mold. And then as I peel up that edge, I'm going to cut through the rest in a straight line or as close to a straight line as I can get. Now it's still going to wiggle around a little bit. Uh, the seam is going to wiggle around a little bit. But overall, we'll wind up with a seam that we don't want that to be just this crazy jagged seam up the back of the head but that just gives us a nice interlocking seam that will fit nicely back into that plaster banded shell. So this is a, an easy way to get a keyed seam on a brush on mold like this. Again, the whole point of this process is to keep everything fairly simple, straightforward, and low cost for simple molds that you're making around your shop to reproduce life cast parts like this. Now you can see our 5110 did exactly what it's supposed to do. It easily releases from those ears and we don't have any breakage on the ears. So we don't have to worry about the little hydrocal, thin hydrocal ears snapping off as we demold this part. And then more importantly, we don't have to worry about if we're casting rigid foam positives or wax positives or a clay positive, any of that breaking as we demold that. So now we've got our silicone mold demolded and we're ready for casting. Now, overall, we've got a pretty clean mold ready to go. I'm just gonna do a quick TC-808 resin cast, just a hollow cast, just to see the results, just so you can see the final result of the uh, mold that we've made here. But uh, typically, I would use a mold like this for casting a clay positive or maybe some foam positives. I'll be using this in several upcoming tutorials to do some other projects. So we're going to seat that back in. And again, you see how that seam just goes right back together. And the back half of the mold just snaps right back in place. And this is a tough enough plaster banded shell that we can actually use a tension strap to close it. Now you don't want to be crazy with that. You don't want to get a ratchet strap from the hardware store, but a traditional mold strap will easily strap this back in place and get everything secure. Now I'm just going to spray a little bit of E302 rocket release into the mold. And that is a paintable spray release. So we're gonna get that in, secure the mold, and we're ready for casting. Now this, just to keep the video short, I'm just gonna do a very quick cast just to show you the results of what we've got here. I'm just gonna mix up a little bit of the TC-808 casting resin. 808 comes in actually two different colors. You can get it in the regular white or black. So a lot of people use the black for a lot of weapon props or prototypes where they need a true black part. For this, I just want to mix up a couple of uh, batches of the 808, just the regular white formula, and just slosh this around by hand and be able to pull out a hollow, low-cost positive. And in a future video, I'm going to be pouring up another copy of this using the 808 sloshed around backed up by rigid foam. So stay tuned for that, as well as some other applications for this kind of mold. And as I mentioned in the intro, a mold made like this, if it's done properly, will hold up for many castings and for many years. Now, as always, I will link to all of the products I used in the video description, so be sure to check those out. And I'm on a schedule now of posting new content every Monday, so be sure to check in on our channel. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe, and of course, click that little bell icon, so every Monday you get the notification that a new video has been posted. I'll also be posting the part one link here at the end screen, as well as three other videos that might be helpful for your molding and casting journey. And as always, thanks for watching.